Hello, good people of YouTube. Sea Lord here, and today we have a live reaction replay featuring the one, the only Tier 9 American Battle Cruiser ship, the Illinois. So, if you guys don't know what a live reaction replay is, it's where I sit here and watch a replay live with you guys for the first time. So, everything that you hear come out of my mouth is my genuine reaction to what's going on in the match in the background. And, well, if you're wondering how I find the ones that are somewhat interesting to watch, well, I maybe record a few of these at a time, and if nothing exciting happens, we don't, well, upload it to the channel. So, if you're here watching this one, then, well, something good must have happened, so I encourage you guys to stick around for it. So, we have Arctic Tiger here in the, in the Illinois. I caught myself from saying the much-dreaded Illinois that I do say sometimes, mostly just because it sounds goofy. But anyway, Illinois, if you don't know, it's a ship that we've been talking about, uh, I feel like a pretty decent amount recently. It's been in a couple of the recent top five videos. It is, of course, the Iowa that essentially has 12 Des Moines guns bolted to the deck. I know it's not exactly that. It does have less HP than an Iowa, and the guns do have a longer reload time than the Des Moines guns, but they are the 203mm guns that the Des Moines does get, those wonderful 8-inch guns. And has the same shell property to, to the HE Super Float, well, both the HE and the AP are super floaty, but does have that wonderful improved AP. Now, Arctic did not include his commander build, but it does look like he has, uh, what is a Swift and Silence, the skill that gives you that engine buff when you are undetected. Uh, but again, we'll see what he has as we go through it. He is top tier, which is, of course, a great thing. Oh, look, see, look at the lead he's giving on the Sharn Horse, and I bet you that that may not be enough to get those hits. This is, is the Sharn Horse 43, the new Sharn Horse you can get by just playing the game. It's more of a secondary focus Sharn Horse. I do believe I have acquired mine. I just haven't had time to sit down and do a proper video on it just yet. He does get a hit on the Sharn Horse 43, but it is a single hit. Probably tapped like the turret or something, if I had to guess. Next salvo. Nah, and you guys saw the huge lead he gave those shells, but yeah. Nah, the Illinois, or I should say the Des Moines guns in general, are meant to be used at closer ranges, like this 13.7 kilometers Kitakaze. Ooh, the salmon goes down already. That's fast. Salmon, salmon gets gunned down by the Cleveland. Wow. I mean, normally this early submarines are getting, uh, you know, just depth charged to death, and guy hasn't even had enough time to run out his, his uh, submerge time. But anyway... So that's an unfortunate early game mishap for the friendly team. You see going, to, ooh, I thought he might have clipped that Kitakaze there with those shells behind the island. Oh, and the Shoulders 43 takes out the friendly Sherberg. Two ships down before the four minute mark. That's um, impressive. And neither of them destroyers. What is this? Destroyers not dying in the first five minutes of the game so far? That's new. Shoulders 43 is being pushed out to the border there and you will notice too that arctic is here in a division with a friendly fletcher and the dalian so he's got that going for him we're gonna come around the corner he's loading that ap in the tubes and let's see this should be pretty good especially from this close range kitakaze takes out the other kitakaze yep pretty good pins there 5900 so let it rip again Kitakaze, I was Kitakaze, Riga is turning out now, so she's going to be slightly more angled, but that Mark 8 Super Heavy AP doesn't really care. Ooh, then she eats a salvo from somebody, I think that might have been, oh, the Carl Johan out there in the back, and boom, there we go, Arctic picks up his first kill of the match, the enemy Riga. Now here comes Sharnhorse 43, probably emboldened by that kill that he got earlier, but um, yeah, I know when I get a kill, you feel a little good about yourself, right? You feel a little adventurous, but look, when it's you versus one, two, three, four, five, six enemy ships, may not want to uh, go that route. Now, Arctic here is doing the cruiser thing and using the enemy smokescreen. Or is that the friendly smoke screen? Ah, oh, I see what's going on here. He's got a Fletcher there that's going to provide him with a smoke cloud upon request. Although it looks like it doesn't really matter at this point since it's just a Sean Horse 43 left alive over here. He's getting properly farmed down by the friendly team. But if you look at the mini-map, you see things aren't uh, all good and dandy. Because out west, boy, did the enemy go heavy. Looks like one of their ships just went mid, grabbed B, and then the rest are going to A. 
and the friendly team, oh there he goes, picks up that kill there with his short arms 43 for his second kill of the game just before the, well just after I should say the five minute mark. So yeah, the enemy team has gone very heavy out to the west and looks like Arctic and his crew are going to be plunging down the channel from C to B. Definitely something you want to do because once that, you know, death ball over there gets going, it's probably going to get going. Now this is what's called the Lemming Train. This group of ships that are just pushing as one out to the west. Uh, you know, the ships get together like Lemmings and just follow one another. And Lemming Trains can be very scary if um, you actually, you know, push, right? And if this team can get two and two together and push, they can be a quite dangerous death ball as they push out to the east. So it looks like the Cleveland is um, uh, going to be a Sasha. Looks like Sasha was the enemy DD that bravely took B. And he's running now. So they got a Carl, a Caracilio, a Soyuz, U190, and a Georgia Highbirds over there. So that's... Um, that's quite a lot of firepower that's about to come steaming over here to the east, if they if they do that, right? They might just go and chase the Ruprecht off to the edge of the map. Oh, well, never mind. Ruprecht's dead. <laughs> Georgia took care of that. So definitely they're probably going to charge out here over to B, just because, well, it's where Arctic and his gang are at. All right, so no spotting either, because the DD that was out to the west is now perished, and the friendly... Uh, Fletcher and shit was that Shimakaze or Kitakaze or right behind Arctic here. Yeah, Kitakaze. Nice little fleet pushing through into the B cap. Um, so I mean, you got a lot. Of, you got a lot of DPM here with the Kitakaze, the Fletcher, the Illinois, and the even the Dolly. And even though it's like you know half a uh, small inch. All right, here we go. Oh, is he gonna do? Ah, uh, he's really gonna play like a bit Des, Mo Des Moines here, fellas. I think he's just gonna nestle up to this iron right here. And again, literally play it like a large Des Moines. Because this is exactly what all American heavy cruisers do. Find their island waifu, hug it, sit behind it, and use their great shell arcs like you see right there to shoot over the island and farm down the enemy targets. So he, he's got quite a smorgasbord to choose from here. A Caracilio, a Carl, a Cleveland, and a Soyuz, all which are... Yep, alright, they're pushing into B. This is going to be interesting. Enemy team is winning, by the way. Uh, by a little over what 40 yeah over 40 points at this at this moment um, kills are pretty even although the friendly submarine is down which that that does suck a friendly battleship is down another friendly destroyer and a cruiser enemy team has two cruisers I'm oh, sorry two destroyers one cruiser and one battleship down thus far oh man but look at all the, all these battleships pushing into into the B cap this is um yeah now, they do have the Kitakaze, they do have the Fletcher, that, you know, that's some decent torpedo power there. But they don't really have any heavy hitters, because the Carl 14th, tiny guns, Lion has small guns, and this team has a Soyuz with 16-inch guns, a Georgia with 18-inch guns. So, mm, yeah, as far as, like, high alpha damage, the enemy team does definitely have the advantage there. But in terms of DPM, this little anger ball here that's forming up in B does have quite a bit. Especially that Kitakaze can get his guns on targets. Alright, so it looks like the enemy Graf Zeppelin is being very brave or not wise and going after, you know, a Fletcher and an Illinois, all you know, both who have very strong AA. I mean look, Graf Zeppelin's a great cruiser, right? So you really need to go after the single ships if you catch my drift. Soyuz is looking at the Carl out there and just sailing straight into Arctic here. Up oh, here's the Georgia. Going around, getting shots on Carl, on Carl, on Arctic. Now, the Georgia's guns, those 18-inch guns, are 457. So, fortunately, they cannot overmatch the bow of the Illinois. So, that's good. Uh, he's got a fire there on the Georgia. This Caracelio and Soyuz gang, they, they, they are not stopping. They are going full bore into the B-cap. Which should lead to some uh, interesting consequences here in a minute. Yep. There goes the Dalian Torps, looks like Shimakaze, Shimakaze, Kitakaze, and the Fletcher both got their racks out. I mean, obviously, I mean, any DD player is going to be drooling at the side of three battleships pushing towards them with no type of destroyer escort. Ah, the Caracilio is showing a little bit of ankle to Arctic. I can feel Arctic's need. Like, I can feel his desire to push out right now and go forward with the AP shells. 
And I 100% encourage this move right here, even though he's outnumbered 1 to 3 right here. Alright, let's do it, Arctic. Go, full, full throttle. Let's do it. Yeah, yeah. Tear him up. Alright, so now we're about to see this 8-inch AP do its thing. Alright. So we got 5k, 10k there into the Carousilio side. The car of the 14th is at low HP. Can he pick him up here with one blast, two blasts? That should be good enough for a kill. Yep. All right, so the Carousilio is showing perfect broadside to Arctic. Aiming at the upper belt armor, mid mid belt armor. Should be enough with the Carousilio is a lower tier battleship. Getting that rear turret into the action right now. And that should be a pretty good chunk right there. Yep, that would get him 3200. Still aiming for the upper bit of the ship at the extremities for that thin armor. Got him down to what was it? Oh, not even looking. Going for the blind shot here while he's got free. What? <laughs> okay, if he could have pulled that off, that, that would have been something else. Soyuz is moving up quite closely. He gets the secondary kill on the Carousilio. Now the Soyuz and him are just going to very daintily pass by each other. Looks like both are attempting to avoid the ram. Broadside Cleveland out there. That's a very poor decision for you, sir. All right, gets a shot out. Is he going to Citadel him? No, 3,000. Six overpins. Come on, game. Get the Cleveland's a light cruiser, but 8-inch shells really shouldn't be overpinning the Cleveland from 5 kilometers. Okay, so the Soyuz got to pass on by. Making a very good decision here not to, you know, engage in the whole trying to outturn the other guy maneuver after you do the drive-by. Because that's how you get clapped in the Citadel for most of your HP. Looks like he is keeping an eye on that Soyuz. I would get that back gun on him right now. Yeah, looks like he has freed up the turrets. But he's, he's torn between the Soyuz and the Cleveland. And he's watching his stern there too. Make sure not to give him any chance to get a bite into his stern. Very, very good here. It's so tempting to, again, just move the ship over and get those turrets on target as fast as possible. But especially when you're facing a battleship like the Sylvester Soyuz, which has very good AP, you most certainly do not want to do that. Alright, so he's angling outward again. Bring his guns onto target now, the Soyuz. He can chunk the superstructure here for a decent bit, even with the AP. He's keeping that loaded. Knocks out a secondary shell on the Soyuz. And let's see, chunking the superstructure for a bit. There's a defense expert. I wasn't even paying attention to the amount of planes he was shooting down. Up, uh, Cleveland is playing Ring Around the Rosy. Uh, one more salvage of the Soyuz superstructure should kill him. There we go. That is Crack and Unleash for Arctic here. And now he has a Cleveland to play with. Ooh, Cleveland is reversing around the island. So as slow as battleships are, um, they're not quite slow enough to be outpaced by cruisers moving in reverse. Oh, and there's a Graf Zeppi. He's found the other cruiser from the enemy team. Um, Graf Zeppi is not close enough to use his main armament. So that's unfortunate for the Graf Zeppelin. Oh, you should have the Cleveland here. Get him. Doesn't even change camera. He gets eight overpins? What? Come on, come on, game. That should be pins from this angle. Watch, he's going to sit down here or something. No, okay. So he gets a full pin there at the end. For some reason, despite uh, shooting the... like, I get that Cleveland wasn't, like, steeply angled or something, but, like, come on. Like, he should have pinned him there. Ooh, U-190 dev strikes the Leon out of existence. So despite all that, it's still a very close game. Enemy team is down to four ships, friendly, friendly team's down to four ships, and one of the ships left alive on the enemy team is the U-190. A very, very sneaky boy. He is up to six kills, ladies and gentlemen. Looks like he's... What's he going to go after? The Georgia, the Asasio, or the Graf Zeppi? Looks like the Lexi-10 is going to go over there and spot the Graf Zeppelin. does drop him a fighter to help keep the Graf Zeppelin spotter planes at bay. And there's the Graf Zeppelin, 15 kilometers away, 5 kilometers outside of his main battery gun range. What a very, very poor decision here from this Graf Zeppelin captain. AP loaded. Can he send out the Graf Zeppelin from this range with AP? No, he's getting some pretty good pins, though. Um, man, but again, look at the lead he's having to give the Zeppelin. That's a huge lead, and he's still just tagging him on his stern. Lexington's going in for a, a run with his... Rocket planes, still just getting taps in on the sterns. There's Confederate there, ladies and gentlemen. Needs to leave a little bit more. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah, he mostly bounces off the flight deck now. I mean, but hey, more damage is more damage. <laughs> God, the shells take so long to get there. You'd think that, you know, all the shells have reached their target. They can get a couple more pins there at the end. So he needs to go forward and... Um, take care of that Zeppi. But of course, if you get too close, you get, uh, 
you get the main battery guns of the Zeppelin, which are um, pretty, pretty potent, especially for a ship like the Illinois that has lower than average HP for its tier. Up, oh, the Zeppelin is spotted yet again. So it gives it even more lead. And let's see what this does. The flight time is just ridiculous. All right, so it uh, looks like you're still going to get that stern section. Yeah, mostly off of the flight deck. See, but the thing is, too, he's trying to thread his shells over this mountain. If he goes forward, obviously, that, that mountain's going to eventually block his shells. So it's a balancing act, apparently, of, yeah, like, look at that. Of getting enough shells through, but also not going up enough to where you can't get any shells through. That might be enough right there. Yeah, there you go. See, the mountain's blocking those shots. And now he gets a Citadel down to 770 HP on the Zeppi. Let's go one more salvo. That should be enough to secure the Graf Zeppelin for him. And that should be his seventh kill of the game. And let's see, ladies and gentlemen. Will that be enough? Oh, yeah, that's going to get it. There we go. Seven kills, strike team, general offensive, and coordinated attack. But wait, there's more because the Georgia is still around. And Georgia is quite the formidable ship. But when you are, well, the last ship left alive, well, last battleship I should have left alive on your team, um, and everyone can only see you, you're going to be the most popular girl at the prom. All right, so let's see. AP2 superstructure, nice roll there for 8,100. Graf Zeppelin misses his last dive bombers there. That should be all that we hear from the Graf Zeppelin since his cruiser is sunk. Swamped it over to HE there as the Georgia is attempting to flee away from this most unfortunate uh, situation for himself. And wow, that, that was a rare game that was pretty close all the way through. Um, Arctic, man, seven kills. Seven kills. And I gotta give it to him and his division. I mean, going up the middle like that, getting to that B cap, and face facing that enemy push head on. Most definitely he did some carrying here. So he got a fire on the Georgia. And let's see, any more fires? Nope, four pins there. Can he get the Georgia? Can he get the eighth kill to wrap it all up? Eight would be a nice round number. I think with his DPM, he could make it happen. Now, he does have to keep in mind, too, there is an Asashio, there is a U190 out there that I'm sure are just waiting to, you know, catch a couple of ships that are trying to pursue this Georgia. Oh, yep, look at that, look at that. There's the Asashio Torps. Asashio is right there. Ooh, come on, come on. Dang. Dang. Oh, you look at all the shells coming in at the Asashio. Can he get the shot? Can he blind fire the Asashio for his eighth kill? Okay, there's some spreading those shells out quite a bit. Looks like none connect, unfortunately. And, oh, man. Man, I wanted, to, I wanted to get eight kills. I wanted to get a nice, even number there. But a hundred and, because oh, fire is still good, was it 198? Did he hit 200,000? 100 and 200 it? Uh, 198,641 damage, 7 kills, 5 fires, 3 defense ribbons, 1 assistant and cap ribbon, 76 secondary hits, and almost 50 planes shot down. Look at the achievements! A defense expert, confederate, strike team, close quarters expert, dreadnought, kraken, div kraken, mostly thanks to him, and high caliber and general offensive. He should be number one on the team. Yep, 2700 base XP. So let's see. The, <laughs> the friendly team sunk nine ships and he got seven of the kills. Yeah, 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 yeah. Man, what a game. What a, a match indeed, Arctic. So, poor Graf Zeppelin. <laughs> Man lost 50 aircraft just to this one guy. I'm surprised even an aircraft left at that point because Zeppelin does not have a great plane regeneration rate. But yeah, thanks for seeing that in, Arctic. If you have a replay that you would like to see, you can feel free to send it in. Uh, send it into the link in the com in the comments in the description down below. If you enjoyed today's video, make sure to drop a like, leave a comment, and subscribe to the channel. I like to do at least one of these replays per week. So again, if you like this type of stuff, let me know in the comments down below. If you didn't like it, also let me know in the comments down below as well. Hope you guys have a wonderful Thursday, a wonderful rest of your week. Hope to catch you guys in the next one. <laughs>